Before the start of the season, I made a video on my predictions for the upcoming season where I thought teams would stack up in their respective conferences and how they would perform come playoff time. In addition to that, I also posted videos on how some all-in trades had only led to first round exits like the Timberwolves, Atlanta Hawks, and I did an entire video on how the Rudy Gobert trade would go down as one of the worst in NBA history. And while I still maintain that was one of the worst trades in NBA history, which I'll get into, but in short, I had very little faith and confidence in a team like the Minnesota Timberwolves going into the season, a team that I thought was poorly coached a poorly fit roster and a soft-minded star player in Carl Anthony Towns. I had the Timberwolves finishing ninth in the Western Conference and missing the playoffs, getting beat out in the play-in. Hell, I even made a video that I wouldn't be shocked if Anthony Edwards requested a trade a year from now. And I'm here to say I was wrong about this team. I was wrong about the Minnesota Timberwolves because even though it's still relatively early in the season and a lot can change over the course of a few months, but barring any major injuries to the roster, this team in the early going has proven why they are a legitimate contender playing some of the best basketball we have seen to date in the NBA. How good, you ask? Well, let's dive into it. As always, if you're new to the channel and you like this type of content, then be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a video. And in return, I'll be providing more NBA content like this. Also, before I get into the video, a big shout out to the sponsor and sponsoring this channel for the entire NBA season, Underdog Fantasy. If you haven't heard about Underdog, let me tell you about their platform real quick because I absolutely love this app and it's super easy to use. And if you're like me and you like making predictions, even if they're bad ones, and maybe you want to make a little money on the side, my personal favorite that I use on the app is NBA Pick. They have higher or lowers on most player stats for any game. Just pick higher or lower on a given player stat for their upcoming game, and you can win up to 20 times your money in a single night if you do five pickums and you get them all right. And guys, they're offering viewers on this channel an exclusive offer if you use the promo code and one hoops, all one word, you'll get your first deposit doubled up to $100. Who doesn't want free money, right? It's really that easy. I'll leave a link to the site and the code in the description if you're interested, and let me know what pick you guys end up making. Now, I think it's safe to say that last season was a disappointing year for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Yes, they had an injury to Carl Anthony Towns that kept him out for the good portion of the year, but even when he was in the lineup, they weren't that great. They were pretty bad on offense and their ability to take care of the basketball, turning it over at a high rate, not a good rebounding team despite the size they had and having two of the best rebounders in the game, and they struggled to close out games, and they were very inconsistent throughout the entire season. And to make matters worse, you had the pressure of a team that was expected to start winning now because they had just made an all-in trade to get Rudy Gobert by mortgaging their future to get him by moving five first round picks, one of which was Walker Kessler, who they had just drafted. And this for a player who was on a sizable contract and already on the wrong side of 30. Now, as I said before, I do still think the Wolves will regret this trade because not only did they fork over so many of their future draft picks, most of those unprotected picks, but they also took away their ability to make substantial trades in the future to bolster their roster when the soonest pick they can now trade is in 2031. But we'll put that aside for a moment. In any event, it was a disappointing season. The Timberwolves barely squeaked into the playoffs, finishing with the eight seed and then getting eliminated in the first round by the eventual NBA champions. So going into this season without the Timberwolves really making any substantial changes to their roster and the Western Conference really remaining stacked, if not getting better overall, you thought, is this team really gonna make any type of strides to get to the next level? Sure, Cat will be healthy, but will that get them to being a title contender? Well, what the Timberwolves have been able to do in altering the way that they've played last season, that has enabled them to perform so well in beating teams consistently, is they have finally embraced their strong defensive skilled players. Now, the Wolves last season weren't bad on defense. They finished 10th in overall defensive rating, 18th in terms of points per game allowed. They were mid on that end of the floor. But for a team that had one of the best defensive players of this generation in Rudy Gobert and an up-and-coming defensive player in Jaden McDaniels as well as an underrated defensive guards in Mike Conley and Anthony Edwards, they should have been better than an average defensive team. And so far this season, they have completely turned around their focus, their hustle, their communication on defense, which has led them to being one of the best defensive teams in the NBA and by a pretty wide margin with a defensive rating at the time of this recording anyway of 107.9, the best in the association and a net rating of fourth in the league. Like despite the Wolves not really being the best team on offense, currently middle of the road in their overall offensive numbers, but their defense is so good 
that it has enabled their overall net rating to be one of the best in the NBA. And of course, one of the best records in the league and sitting number one in the Western Conference. Rudy Gobert is back to form and being one of the best rim protectors in the game, elite level shot blocking and timing with his footwork in the paint, back to being one of the best rebounders in the NBA, crashing the offensive glass and finishing second chance points, something he really struggled with last season in his second chance points and opportunities being down overall. He also had one of the worst shot blocking seasons of his career last year since his rookie season. And for Rudy Gobert, he has finally learned how to play in the overall style of offense that the Wolves have been wanting to play with it being a pace and space team. JD McDaniels, you know, you can say they way overpaid for him offering him that massive extension in the offseason, and I wouldn't disagree with you on that, but he's been huge for them in developing their overall defensive game, being one of the better point of attack defenders in the league and on his way to becoming an all defensive team player. And look, when you have strong defensive guys like Gobert, like McDaniels, and you see them hustling and giving it their all on that end of the court. That becomes infectious and leads to players who wouldn't otherwise normally be considered high-level defenders. They up their game on that end of the floor and play with hustle and effort and fighting for loose balls, getting in passing lanes, and pestering their opponent on D. Cat is playing one of the best defenses of his career, which is saying a lot. Anthony Edwards, same thing. Nikhil Alexander-Walker, he's been great on that side of the ball. It's all just been clicking for these guys and being locked in and making it so hard for teams to score on them on a nightly basis. Now, of course, the defense aside, I don't think you can underestimate the importance of the ascendance of Anthony Edwards to superstardom. We all knew this kid was going to be good. He was the number one overall selection for a reason, but seeing him take his game to a new level and being in the MVP conversation, becoming much more efficient on offense, elevating his outside shooting, improving his free throw percentage, but also getting to the hoop and drawing contact to get to the line more, but it's not just his scoring. He's impacting the offense with his improved passing and court vision, being much more deferential when he needs to be, recognizing switches, utilizing the pick and roll more with Gobert. For Anthony Edwards, the talent was always there, but he's become much, much smarter as a player, a better decision maker, taking better care of the ball despite a higher usage, and that has really taken the Wolves to a new level. As good as Carl Anthony Towns has been, and he himself has really stepped up his game on both ends of the floor this season, this is now Anthony Edwards' team, both for now and for the future. And I feel like the Wolves have finally started accepting that. Cat has accepted that and taking more of a 1B type role. And when players know their role, they do what needs to be done for the betterment of the team. That's everything when it comes to truly creating success on the court. When the guys have bought in, they play for each other, everyone is on the same page, the results come with it. And also you have to give Chris Finch a lot of credit. For a coach a lot of people thought was going to be on the hot seat going into the season, a coach that had some of the highest odds at sports books to be fired this year, he really has turned this team around and gotten the most out of every player and maximizing their strengths and developing their weaknesses. Give credit to where it's due. And a lot of that sits with the coaching staff. Now here's the thing. I do think the Wolves are one of the biggest success stories of the season so far. I do still consider them legitimate contenders, but do I actually think they're a title team? Like, do we really see them winning a championship this season? No, probably not, because regular season success is very different when it comes to what we see come playoff time. And as good as the Wolves have been, I still think the Nuggets are the favorite to win and repeat, and I can't see the Wolves getting past them, and even if they do, can I see them taking out a team like the Celtics or Bucks if they come out of the East? Hell, even the Sixers, who have been incredible to start the year and just recently beat the Timberwolves. I just see it being a very tall order for this team. I still think the Wolves will make a deep playoff run and likely make it to the Western Conference Finals, but beyond that, I have a hard time seeing it actually with them winning a championship. And it kind of goes back to what I had been saying about the Rudy Gobert trade still being a regrettable one because they went all in for a player on a big contract already over 30. And when you make a trade like that, giving up most of your future, you expect championships coming from that. And I don't see that happening for the Timberwolves. That said, I could be wrong because I was very wrong about the Wolves going into this season, but winning a title versus having some regular season success are two very different tasks. That said though, I would love to hear what you guys think if the Wolves can actually win a championship this season, whether it's this season or in the future. Let me know in the comments. As always, be sure to subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.